Hello, and welcome to my next Executive Series video. Our topic today is Sterility Assurance Level. Aaron Snyder here from Quality Systems Explained, where we make quality systems simple for you. If you're new, make sure you subscribe. Check out the status bar below for our agenda. Stick around to the end for our bonus questions. Our topic, Sterility Assurance Level, is covered by 1345 sections 7.5.2 and 7.5.7. It is partially covered by another ISO standard, 19930. Sterility assurance level in five words. Statistical probability of sterility failure. When we validate our sterilization process, we have to determine the correct sterility assurance level for our product. The sterility assurance level is the probability of a single product that goes through that sterilization process being non-sterile. Since the process of testing sterility, so if we were to take a product and test it for sterility, would compromise the sterility, it's destructive testing, we have to determine the right assurance or the right SAL for our product. In order to set an SAL, we have to determine the time needed to kill all microorganisms. Once we understand that time, we double it. So the example that I gave you in the previous video was that we want to go from a million colony forming units down to zero, then we're going to double that time. So theoretically, we'll go to minus 10 to the minus six or negative 1 million colony forming units. We want to show a 12 spore log reduction to get to our sterility assurance level. Most medical devices, almost a majority of them, will have a 10 to the minus six sterility assurance level. There are some products which may have a more stringent sterility assurance level. And then there are some others that may be temperature sensitive, that may not be able to be put in through various sterilization cycles, who may have a weaker sterility assurance level, maybe 10 to the minus three. It all goes back to risk, how the product's being reused, and how important sterility is to the function, to the safety and effectiveness of the medical device. If we require high sterility assurance and our product is sensitive to temperature, sensitive to those sterilization processes, we may have to consider other manufacturing techniques like aseptic manufacturing. So how do I know this is working? First, my product has an SAL, sterility assurance level, that's documented and captured within my quality management system. Second, my sterility assurance level, it was confirmed during the validation of my sterilization process. And then finally, during my product submission, the FDA or whatever regulatory agency you're dealing with, they have accepted my sterility assurance level that I've outlined for my product. How do I know it's not working? First, I have no sterility assurance level documented for my product. Second, I didn't consider sterility assurance when I validate my sterilization process. Finally, don't even have a validated sterilization process. And now for those three bonus questions. Do we have any products that have a sterility assurance level other than 10 to the minus six? If yes, what are they? Second, where do we document our sterility assurance level? And then finally, who's responsible for determining the sterility assurance level for our product? And what are the processes that govern the sterility assurance level and the sterilization validation? Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, share, and comment. Send any questions to me at qms.jedi at gmail.com. This is Aaron Snyder from Quality Systems Explained, making quality systems simple for you.